Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, today's topic is going to be about the Dusseldorf patient, the the one who was recently cured of HIV. He's been in remission for a while now, and uh, his case was presented in a recent conference. Uh, I I find. Um, uh, three uh, hopeful opportunities from that and two of them will be discussed in this video and one will be in the next video because that's a separate uh, category of hope. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. In the realm of uh, HIV research, a remarkable development has rekindled hope for a broader cure. Historically, a small number of HIV patients experienced remission following a transplant of donor cells containing two copies of CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. This mutation is known for providing resistance to HIV. These instances generated significant optimism but also highlighted two critical constraints. First, the procedure was primarily viable for those who were also battling some form of blood cancer such as leukemia, justifying the risks associated with a bone marrow transplant. Secondly, the need for donor cells to have two copies of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation, which is called as homozygous, significantly narrowed the pool of potential donors as this genetic trait is quite rare. Now a breakthrough case involving an anonymous patient in Germany has shifted this narrative. The patient received a transplant involving donor cells with only a single copy of CCR5 Delta 32 mutation and this is called as heterozygous. Rather than the previously required two, this patient suffering from acute myeloid leukemia or AML has achieved long-term HIV remission approaching six years without detectable levels of HIV DNA or RNA and with higher levels of CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cells. This case was presented at the International AIDS Conference 2024 in Munich, Germany and has been hailed as a major advancement in HIV cure research. The significance of this development lies in the fact that finding donors with one copy of CCR5 Delta 32 mutation is much easier than locating those with two copies. Approximately 1% of people of European descent carry mutations in both copies of the CCR5 gene, whereas 10% have one mutated copy. This considerably broadens the donor pool, making stem cell transplantation for HIV more accessible. I'm not saying more viable, but I'm saying more accessible because even now the standard is that there has to be some kind of blood cancer so that it justifies the risk of a bone marrow transplant. But in the event of a bone marrow transplant being necessary, uh, these kind of donors are much easily available, as 10 times more easily available as compared to those with uh, both copies of uh, CCR5 Delta 32 mutations. Dr. Christian Gabler, a co-leader of the Personalized Infectious Medicine Program at the Berlin Institute of Health, emphasized the potential of using heterozygous donors to expand the availability of allogenic stem cell transplantation. For those who are not familiar with the term allogenic, allogenic means uh, taking donor uh, cells and transplanting it into the patient. The opposite of that is autologous, where you take the patient's own blood cells, modify it and put it back in again. Like AGT103-T is autologous, whereas allogenic will always have a donor. Donor will be providing the cells. So the availability of allogenic stem cell transplantation uh, is uh, helpful for this kind of approach. This approach is particularly beneficial in regions where finding homozygous Delta 32 donors is nearly impossible. He also noted that this case strengthens the understanding that HIV cure mechanisms are not solely dependent on CCR5 mutation status. The patient dubbed the next Berlin patient in reference to Timothy Ray Brown, the first person cured of HIV, exemplifies the potential for long-term HIV remission without the stringent requirement for two CCR5 Delta 32 mutations. Dr. Uh, Christoph Spinner, who is an infectious disease specialist and also co-chair of the AIDS 2024 conference, remarked that this case highlights the need for further research to understand the underlying mechanisms at play and to translate these findings into broader cure efforts. Additionally, the success of this case may have implications for ongoing clinical trials using gene editing techniques such as CRISPR-Cas9 to modify the CCR5 receptors in a person's own cells. 
These therapies, even if not completely eliminating the receptor from all cells, could still significantly impact HIV remission. In summary, the case of the anonymous patients, uh, a patient in Germany receiving a CCR5 wild type Delta 32 transplant marks a pivotal moment in the HIV cure research. It demonstrates the long-term remission is such, uh, uh, achievability with a more readily available donor pool offering new hope and expanding the possibilities for curing HIV globally. Now, this leads to three hopes I said before. The first hope is that uh, in case a transplant is needed, you could always use uh, heterozygous uh, uh, donors uh, because they are 10 times more easily available. So that is the first hope. The second hope uh, is that uh, if a uh, heterozygous uh, approach is uh, able to give lasting cure, then the hopes for uh, therapies such as uh, uh, EBT-101 increases. The, the other uh, opportunity I'm talking about uh, is uh, efforts done in the past uh, to do a stem, a stem cell transplant for patients suffering with HIV and blood cancer where the donor was not uh, having any CCR, um, uh, CCR5 Delta 32 uh, mutations. So in some of those cases, patients found remission and in other cases, patients uh, rebounded back with HIV. So the study of those two cases to try to find out the why some patients with normal uh, stem cell donor uh, were able to overcome HIV while others could not uh, leads to the possibility that when uh, myeloablation is done to clear out the bone marrow of uh, older cells, it's possible that uh, the infected cells also got killed in the process uh, due to the chemotherapy that was used for myeloablation. And then when the new donor cells were uh, introduced into the body, uh, they might have gone and killed the residual uh, HIV. And therefore, those patients were able to uh, have durable remission from HIV. Whereas the ones where it did not happen, it's possible that the HIV reservoirs, which would probably have been in macrophages and dendritic cells, might have reseeded HIV uh, in the new, uh, newly established population on the bone marrow. And that's the reason why they rebounded. So if that is the case, then I suppose there is still another ray of hope that while doing those kind of uh, transplants for uh, patients suffering with both HIV and uh, blood cancer uh, and where there is no availability of uh, either heterozygous or uh, homologous um, CCR5 uh, Delta 32 mutation candidates, uh, then uh, if there is a possibility to uh, rid the macrophages of HIV, then the success rate of uh, curing HIV could probably be much higher. At this point of time, I don't think we have any therapy that is capable of going and eradicating uh, HIV from macrophages. So we'll have to wait and see how uh, EBT-101 uh, manages to fare. And if EBT-101 succeeds and uh, they are able to find out a way of doing the same thing with uh, macrophages, then I think that a cure would probably be there in the horizon. So again, these are all things that are coming out of my thought process, not as a scientist or as a doctor, because I am none of those. But based on all the readings that I have done so far in this subject over the last two years. Friends, I would like to hear your free feedback. So please uh, definitely put your feedback in the comment section below. And also recently I had uh, some comments uh, in my other channel, which is basically an investment channel. Uh, and uh, someone had commented there on a non-HIV video uh, asking for progress on EBT and uh, uh, AGT-103. So I have two uh, responses to that. The first response is that um, you need to be sensitive to my needs also as a content creator. When we were having HIV also in my investment channel, um, many people dropped out from subscribership because there is still a stigma associated with HIV. And when non-HIV people uh, get notification on their cell phones uh, that a new HIV video has been published, uh, they, they have problems with that because then there are questions uh, from people who watch uh, these things pop up on their notification. 
so i found that there was a lot of drop in uh, subscribers and new subscribers were not joining up for my investment channel and that's the reason why i separated out both the channels so that my investment channel guys can be absolutely focused on investment because that's what i do there and my hiv uh, channel guys can be free to comment and have full focus on hiv so that's why the separation has happened and at the same time i'd also like to give you a feedback on agt 103 and ebt 101 there is no news at all available at this point of time because agt 103 dash t doesn't have the funds to start phase 1b so they are hunting for funds and as far as ebt 103 uh, is concerned ebt 101 is concerned uh, they had a little bit of a setback and they are trying to work it out and they have not yet come up with any press release saying how they are planning to go i still think uh, ebt 101 is viable and i also think agt 103 t is viable but they are all in a standstill at this point of time as soon as i get some information i'll get back to you so friends uh, so take this feedback on a constructive basis and help me to be a successful content creator not only for hiv but also for genomic investment which is where i started my journey as a content creator and that's where my heart lies because i am also an investor and i invest in gene therapies and i want to make sure that the uh, genomic investment channel is also a success and i look forward to your cooperation thanks and have a great day